So hey everybody, um, welcome to another episode of Car Stylus. And today I want to show you something. I'm not sure if I've shown this before or not, but this is a technique that I've developed in cutting holes and in graphics into high density meshes, any kind of mesh that is really. Um, when you do when you do polygon models, you know, you've got your polys, your either your coarse or dense polys. One of the advantages when using polys is the smooth transitions between forms. That's really great because sometimes you don't have to think about getting something to be a G1, G2, G3, that kind of continuity between surfaces. Uh, it can get unwildly sometimes, but uh, the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. But one of the disadvantage, and this is a big one, is it's against the nature of polys, uh, this kind of modeling technique to cut holes in graphics such as, such as uh, headlamp graphics and, and windshield graphics and such. When you do that, you know, you really, it's difficult and you break the continuity and you break the flow of your highlights and it just does not work. Uh, and really, when you get into that point, really, it's probably better to, to either use your sub D as, as a template in Alias or Isom or uh, Rhino or whatever you use, or you, can, um, or you can cut holes in the fashion that I'm doing, or well, there's many different ways. And this is one way that I'm going to show you. And this, is main, this, may, this way mainly is for uh, visualization, that is, getting the model to a point where you want to throw it into V-RED or your whatever visualization package that you use uh, uh, to get some good renders out of and to refine the model and go forward. But it's really not that kind of uh, technique that should be used for production ready or for um, really tight models. So with all of that said, let me show you how I do it. Now in, in ZBrush here, uh, we have this thing called Poly painting and poly painting is really just applying color uh, to and sometimes texture to your polys here. Poly painting does not use UVs. It's a per pixel kind of uh, technique and it really works well. You just don't think about it. You pick your standard brush. You take take it off of Z Add here up here. You go into RGB. And you're really just good to go. I'm going to go to that, make sure the, the, the paint icon is on right here. You can see it here. And once that happens, I can use my V key and jump. If you look down here, my V key and jump between the two colors, whatever colors that you pick down here. And in this case, it's black and white. And jump between those two colors. I'm going to start off with black here. And then I can start painting on, by the way, make sure that everything is sort of working right. A good thing when you do this is to make sure that you're not on dynamic. And this is what this is on. This is on dynamic. Take that off of dynamic. And then I'm going to subdivide it even more without using dynamic like that. That's going to add some more subdivision levels here in the lower, and lower resolution, higher resolution box here in your geometry tab. And I'm just going to delete those. Okay, so now it's a smoother mesh, and now I won't get that sort of um, jagged thing. And so I'm going to play around with my graphics here. And that's the cool thing. I can kind of play around with my graphics without worrying about any technical uh, issues, really. I'll use white to mask out or to take away by pressing my V key here, and I can just kind of paint over that, and, it, and then V key again. It's between V, anytime you see me uh, applying black or erasing black, it's either white or black in my color palette here. So now the next step is to go over to your uh, masking tab here and you want to mask by color and then intensity. Once you've done that, it's going to take that paint and turn it into a mask. You'll see that very clearly if I take off of the, the paint, turn the paint off, and you'll see now that I've got a mask created. I can see there is some, uh, some spots where, where it's not as dense, so I am going to press my control key with my standard brush on, and I am just going to fill that in like that. 
So I've got that. And then the next step is to take and make this into a poly group is what they call it. It's really just a selection set. If you're familiar with Maya or you're familiar with Modal, it's really just a selection set. It's a, just another name for a selection set. So now you can see that you can see the mask is reflecting the density of the mesh. If I go to here, you can see how how uh, dense or less dense the mesh is. It's not it's. It's not as dense as it can be, uh, neither is it coarse. It's, it's somewhere in the middle. But you can see that the, the mask is reflecting that. So I'm going to take this and make this into a polygroup. And I'm going to do that by pressing Control W. It's going to take the mask. And if I turn on the mesh again by pressing Shift F, you'll see that it's taken that mask and changed it into a different selection set, a polygroup. So, I'll shift control and click on that and that's going to hide the rest, everything but those two polygroups that were just created. And then I am going to go and press my crease key. I'll go to geometry and I'll say crease here. And you can see with these little dots around that edge, there's a crease on that. And what that allows me to do now is go to, I'm going to press the comma key and bring up this light box thing. I'll go to my brushes and then I'll go to my smooth and then I'm going to to click on the smooth crease and what that allows me to do is crease these edges or uh, interact with the crease on the edge of here now this is really the same thing as using the deformation key and saying uh, polish by crease but what that'll do is that'll that'll look at the whole model and it'll apply that algorithm that'll apply that that two to the whole model. We don't really want to do that. But by using the other technique, using that brush, it allows me to apply that only in uh, specific areas. So I'm going to turn that on or use that to by pressing shift, that's going to take me to the smooth two. But in this case, because because we've changed to the smooth crease smooth two, it's going to be a smooth crease brush here. So as I now smooth along that edge, watch what, hap watch what happens to that edge. You can see that it's pulling the polys together in order and is making that, that edge very tight, right? And that's the magic of it all. Now, obviously, you can see that things are not, in certain cases, you can see little wiggles here and you can see maybe a little wiggles here. Again, this is not for perfection. This is for uh, visualization. I am going to go ahead and take the slide to, and you can find this in the brush menu, B, you know, and find slide. You know how to do that. If you don't, um, I'll go over it later. But I can now slide along, and not in the normal direction of the polys, but along the edges of the polys. I can slide and keep, keep the surface pretty much intact by sliding the polys in order to correct various issues, as you can see me doing here. Um, this one's got that issue, but you know I'm not going to be able to correct it in from all views. But I'm just going to take my slide to, and I'm just going to pull this out just a little bit. So now I'm going to turn it off of my uh, thing. Now you can see that there is indication that there is so like it's not a perfect thing, but I have not destroyed the continuity too much. And if I use my shift control and uh, isolate this polygon, you can see how clean, you can see how clean that edge is. So that allows me to do many other things. I can now apply a very a different uh, material to that when I'm rendering uh, in another package. Because by the way, when I export this out, it'll keep those poly groups, particularly if I separate those, separate those panels into different sub tools and then reconnect them. I can keep those, those poly groups will translate when I'm exporting it to different packages. So that that's really helpful. But another thing that this allows me to do is better detail. I can take this now and what I am going to do is go to my sub two here and I'm going to duplicate that sub two. I'll turn this one off, turn this one on and I will isolate that. And then I am going to delete hidden on here. This will be my headlamp lens, obviously. And then I'll turn that one off, turn this one on. And now we've got this here. I'll take my transpose tube by pressing W. 
control and clicking on that poly group and that's going to automatically mask it you don't have to do it that way but that's one way of doing it and i'll shift control and i'm going to create some more poly groups and push this in not more poly groups but edges i'll push this in a certain distance let's say and now i'm creating a can for my headlamps right that's done and then now i'll click this poly group again and i'll isolate that and i'm going to press my plus key and what that does is expand your uh, poly set to the next logical loop and I get it to that and, and I'm going to make this into its own separate poly group. You can see that we have two poly groups there, a part of the body and a part of this lens and I'll control W and now that's all one poly group. That's going to allow me to do some uh, different things too. So I'll turn everything on. You can see where the poly group is separated, the body and then the can. And then now what I can do is I can take that mask it and I am going to oops, I am going to now use my deformations here uh, to go back to deformations and we are here and I will turn on groups here and I'm going to this this by using this uh, it exponentially uh, makes that particular uh, that particular two more powerful by doing using making that into an open or a circle like this and so I'll just grab that and do this a couple of times and what that's going to do is smooth out that you can see how it's smoothing out that can here I'm going to do it one more time so now I've got this like very smooth can and with that I can now start throwing in detail so really as you can see I've got I've got a can, which has its own separate poly group, and I've got my lens and that other two here. So I've got a lens and the poly, I've got a lens and I've got a, a, a can, and I can work with those in any kind of way that I need to work with it. Now I can do things like um, grab this and uh, let's say, no, we'll do something like this. I'm gonna gr grab my, I'm gonna grab my standard two again and let's do something like this. We'll just um, draw on in this. Again, guys, I just wanna, I want, I wanna really underscore very much, <laughs> really wanna underscore the, this whole, this thing that this is, this is just for visualization. This is not, this is not, I'm sure we can get it to a point where it looks really refined, but it's, it's really for visualization. If you really want to get some, some very clean surfaces, you know where you have to go. And, and that is not ZBrush and it's not uh, Moto or Maya generally. You can, get, you can get there really far, but you won't be able to really dial that thing in. So I'm going to use my uh, clipping curve in the opposite direction. I can... You know, you can clip in many different ways, but if you use it where this, you see that shaded, the shaded shadow on the side of the line, that's going to actually pull the, the mesh toward it. So let me show you. I've masked this part off, right? And I am going to do that. And you can see that I pulled that toward it. You see how that, that's created that? You see? So I am going to... Turn on another feature here that's going to make that even more powerful. I will turn on poly groups on that. That's doing. That's done by pressing Control and Space. And so now when I do that, <clears throat> that's actually changed that to. Um, I'll bring that further. That's actually changed this to a different poly group. You'll see, that's a different poly group right there. So now I can use my expand and get it to that point. And then I am going to make that into a different poly group. I'm going to increase this and so now I've got a crease around that edge which is gonna, it's gonna allow me to clean that up somewhat All right I can clean that up to some extent it's not gonna be perfect again but it'll, it'll allow me to clean it up to some extent You know what I didn't do? Oh, yeah, that's perfect. That's good. 
So, um, so I'm losing the density of the mesh is what's happening. Uh, and the more I, the more I stretch and pull this, this mesh, the more pixelated it's going to become in this stage. It's probably better just to go and, uh, go and dynamesh it some more so I can get some more resolution. And that would have probably cleaned up some of this problem that you see here. I can also, again, and I'm getting a little bit beyond, um, I'm getting a little bit beyond what I was doing was showing you how I can use this technique to create holes and, and, and graphics. So pretty much that is done. I am really just showing you how I would take this a little step further and playing around with some, um, playing around with some uh, details inside of this headlamp. which I've done, all right? <clears throat> That's that, I'm gonna make the different color, turn that back on. And I'm going to, in this case, mask by poly. That's another thing, that's a custom thing that I've put up here. Uh, you'll find that in the menu, masking by poly, in your poly. And that allows me to not, when I'm smoothing or, or doing any application, it's not gonna go beyond the poly that I've started on. So in this case, you can see that um, in this case, you can see that it's not pulling this oranger. Um, it's not pulling the oranger poly set. I'm going to isolate this. And uh, I'm going to just use it like this. And then I'm going to slice this using the clip curve. The, opposite direction this kind of time and that'll just give me a really clean edge like that uh, again this is not if I were going to make this smoother I would dynamesh it or I would z remesh it and I would do uh, some other things but just quickly this shows you how I can get some semblance of some detail inside of there and this is really helpful particularly when you take it inside of vred or your rendering application and you can put some elements to turn on lights you can make this chrome or black or whatever you need to do you then you turn your your lens on and then voila you've got something that <clears throat> sort of seems uh, realish <laughs> and it works so I really hope that's th this is helpful uh, I hope that uh, it's useful and uh, if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back with you later all right